Safe storage is critical when it comes to the world of crypto, but there's lots of options to pick from. Do you go with a free software wallet like Exodus, which in theory is not as safe as a paid option like a hardware wallet such as the Trezor Model T? Or is there actually a third option that combines the best of both worlds? The security of a hardware wallet and the ease of access provided by a software wallet. We'll be diving into all the different storage options for your crypto to make sure that you are using the easiest and most accessible wallets available. Of course, when it comes to the world of crypto, you need somewhere to store those hard-earned funds. If you leave your money on an exchange, it can go bankrupt and it's the least secure place to put your hard-earned crypto. I personally lost over $4,500 when Celsius went bankrupt. Thankfully, I was able to get all of that money back, but it did take several months, almost a whole year, and it wasn't clear if I was ever going to see that money again. Even a large reputable exchanges like FTX have gone bankrupt causing billions of dollars of investors money to be lost so I would personally never ever leave my money on the exchange that I purchased my crypto from the first type of wallet that I used was a software wallet called Exodus I think this is a great place to start when you first get into the world of crypto it's a free downloadable program it's available both on Google Play and the App Store and you can use it on your phone or your computer as well your crypto is protected by by a password and also a seed phrase. This is a string of 12 random words put together and you can use this to gain access to your wallet if say your computer which has Exodus downloaded was broken or you lost your phone. You can still gain access to that money even without the initial device that you downloaded Exodus onto. A software wallet like Exodus isn't as secure as a cold storage option like a Trezor Model T because Exodus still technically has a connection to the internet. If you download some malware like a keylogger, someone may gain access to your wallet by retrieving your password, then they can drain your wallet as well. So this moves us on to a hardware wallet. This is what I got into once I started investing more money into crypto. Now the Trezor Model T is able to connect to Exodus. There's also its own native piece of software called Trezor Suite, but I find navigating the Trezor Model T via Exodus is very straightforward and makes it a lot easier to use the actual wallet itself. So with the wallet, someone will also needs to have access to the physical device as well and they would need to know the password or the seed phrase to retrieve your funds. This helps to add a bit more security. The hardware wallet doesn't have a connection to the internet and that's why it's defined as cold storage. So with hardware wallets there's always an upfront cost. My Trezor Model T costed me 250 New Zealand dollars and if you're just getting into the crypto space that can be pretty off-putting to have to put down that much money just to even begin. And then also going through the process of learning how to use the wallet itself, it can be a barrier to starting that crypto investing journey. There's of course cheaper storage options as well. There's a Trezor Model 1. The biggest difference is the interface, how you interact with the wallet. The Trezor Model T has a touchscreen interface where you can enter the pin code to unlock the wallet and it has a greater amount of storage and it supports a larger amount of coins. One of the biggest risks as well with a hardware wallet is if the device becomes damaged or you actually lose it. Now this is a very real possibility. There's countless stories of people losing their actual hardware wallets. There's an estimated $484 billion worth of Bitcoin that's currently unaccounted for. This is either from people losing their hardware wallets or from forgetting their passwords. So that's a lot of money that's locked up because of this limitation that's associated with both hardware wallets and also software wallets with people forgetting the passwords to them. So what may be another potential option? That's where MPC wallets come in. MPC stands for multi-party computation. An MPC wallet provides the best of both worlds. The security of a cold storage option with the ease of access provided by a software wallet. This will help you know that you won't have to be digging through a landfill to find your lost hardware wallet the same way that this guy had to. It was featured on CNBC News digging through mounds of rubbish to retrieve his hardware wallet which at the time had hundreds of millions of dollars worth of crypto locked up on it. The MPC wallet is a native wallet provided by Easy Crypto, which is a New Zealand crypto based exchange. Some of the benefits provided by an MPC wallet is that two keys are required to send crypto and to move any funds. An individual key share on its own is completely meaningless, and this makes the Easy Crypto MPC wallet 100% custodial and gives you a lot more control over your funds. But there's two big questions that come up with the MPC wallet. What if your device gets lost, stolen, or damaged? And 
what if you want to switch to a different mobile device? Cloud backup is the answer to these questions. If you have, let's say, a Google account with just a few taps, your key share is backed up and gets connected with your account. Whenever you switch to a different mobile device and log into your Easy Crypto profile, the Easy Crypto wallet will recognize that it's you. You will then gain access to the funds on your new device. The Easy Crypto wallet generates two keys to share. One key is securely stored on the user's device and the other is securely stored by Easy Crypto. Even if the security was breached, the person would need to gain access to both keys. If you want to try out the MPC wallet for yourself, check it out by clicking on the link at the top of the description that will take you to the Easy Crypto website. Knowing what storage option to use is just part of the puzzle when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. All the information in this video is completely useless unless you know what cryptos you should be investing in, the best investing strategies, and the best place to actually purchase your crypto from. Make sure to check out this video on screen. It'll give you a complete guide to that.